Imagine waking up after being unconscious for two whole days, your mind foggy and disoriented, only to discover that the one person you trusted most, the love of your life, hadn't even called for help. This chilling reality was what Priscilla Presley experienced during an early visit to Elvis's Memphis mansion. It's a story that pulls back the curtain on the glitz and glamour, revealing the fragility and flaws beneath the surface of the Presley fairy tale. Elvis and Priscilla's relationship was far from ordinary. It was a mix of intense love, rigid control, and moments that would make anyone question the true nature of their bond. This incident wasn't just about one mistake, it was a snapshot of the delicate and often troubling balance of power between the king of rock and roll and the woman who loved him. But was Elvis's decision not to call for help an act of negligence, a way of maintaining control, or just misplaced confidence in his own judgment? Stay tuned, because the truth behind this story is as surprising as it is heartbreaking. Number 7. Setting the Scene the early days of Elvis and Priscilla. Elvis Presley and Priscilla Beaulieu first met in 1959, during a pivotal time in both of their lives. Elvis was stationed in Germany, serving in the U.S. Army, while Priscilla was just a 14-year-old teenager, still navigating her adolescence. Their connection was immediate and undeniable, despite the considerable age gap. Elvis, already a global sensation, was captivated by Priscilla's innocence and beauty, while Priscilla was swept off her feet by the charm and aura of one of the most famous men in the world. Their relationship started against a backdrop of military bases and public scrutiny, laying the foundation for a love story that was as romantic as it was controversial. The early years of their relationship were marked by distance, secrecy, and a constant struggle for approval. With Elvis back in the U.S. and Priscilla still in Germany, the young couple kept their love alive through countless phone calls, handwritten letters, and small, meaningful gifts. Elvis did everything he could to keep Priscilla close, even if only in spirit, while Priscilla, still living under her parents' roof, faced skepticism and concern from her family. Her parents were understandably wary of their teenage daughter's involvement with an older celebrity whose lifestyle was far from typical. Despite their apprehensions, Elvis's persistence and promises eventually earned a reluctant nod of approval, allowing the relationship to continue and flourish, albeit under careful supervision. After years of waiting, Priscilla finally received permission to visit Elvis at his iconic Graceland Mansion for Christmas in 1962. Her excitement was palpable as she boarded the plane to Memphis, eager to finally see the man she had only dreamed of being with for so long. This was not just a visit. It was a chance to step into Elvis's world, to live the fairy tale she had imagined for years. As she approached Graceland, decked out in holiday lights, her heart raced with anticipation, envisioning the magic of the holiday season spent alongside Elvis. But what began as a dream visit would soon take a dark turn, setting the stage for an incident that would reveal the complicated and often unsettling nature of their relationship. Number 6. The Incident. The Pills and Passing Out. Arriving at Graceland for the first time was a moment Priscilla had dreamt of for years, but nothing could have truly prepared her for what awaited her. It was Christmas 1962, and as Priscilla's car pulled up the long driveway, the estate appeared like a vision from a storybook. Graceland was wrapped in festive splendor, adorned with glittering lights that illuminated the sprawling property, reflecting off the holiday decorations scattered throughout. The grand mansion, with its southern charm and opulent decorations, seemed almost surreal to Priscilla. She was stepping into Elvis's world, his sanctuary, and the anticipation of spending time with Elvis, as well as his friends and family, was overwhelming. The excitement that night was electric. Priscilla found herself surrounded by members of Elvis's close circle, the so-called Memphis Mafia. And as they laughed, shared stories, and reveled in the festivities, she felt like she was a part of something much larger, a special, almost magical part of Elvis Presley's private life. But beneath the magic and excitement, 
exhaustion had taken a toll on Priscilla. The journey from Germany had been long and draining, compounded by her insistence on staying awake for days before her departure, simply because she was too thrilled to sleep. When she finally reunited with Elvis, her energy was fading. Elvis, seeing the fatigue in Priscilla's eyes, offered her two red pills, suggesting they would help her relax and sleep better. Priscilla, who wanted nothing more than to be her best self for Elvis, reluctantly accepted the pills, even though she didn't recognize them. Elvis reassured her, insisting they were just a bit stronger than what she was used to and would help her unwind after all the excitement. Trusting him completely, Priscilla swallowed the pills, not realizing the profound effect they would soon have on her. At first, Priscilla felt a wave of calm wash over her. In her memoir, Elvis and Me, she described how the pills initially made her feel good and kind of silly, as if the weight of her exhaustion was finally lifting. But soon, that lightheaded feeling began to spiral out of control. The effects of the pills became far stronger than she had anticipated. She recalled staggering across the room, her body feeling heavy and disconnected, before collapsing onto the bed where Elvis lay. From that point on, everything turned into a blur. Priscilla's memories of the next two days were fragmented, slipping in and out of consciousness, drifting between reality and a dreamlike state that she couldn't fully grasp. She remembered brief, confusing moments, the room spinning, voices speaking to her, but nothing made sense. It was as though time itself had become fluid and she was simply a passenger in her own body, caught between sleep and wakefulness. Number 5. The 48 Hours, Elvis's Response The next two days for Priscilla Presley were a chaotic blur of semi-consciousness and confusion. After taking the pills Elvis had given her, she found herself slipping into an unrelenting fog. Priscilla's mind teetered on the edge of consciousness, aware enough to recognize faint glimpses of her surroundings, but unable to fully engage with what was happening. She would occasionally open her eyes, but everything was distorted. The room seemed to spin around her, and faces appeared blurred, their voices muffled and unintelligible. She remembered hearing concerned murmurs from the people around her, a few of Elvis's friends even suggesting that she might need medical attention. But she was too weak, too overwhelmed by the disorienting effects of the drugs to respond. Time felt like an endless loop, and as the hours passed, Priscilla was left adrift, lost in a haze of confusion and helplessness. Elvis, however, remained steadfast in his decision not to seek medical help for Priscilla, even as members of his entourage urged him otherwise. At one point, someone close to him suggested that it might be wise to call a doctor, pointing out that Priscilla appeared to be in bad shape and that it would be better not to take any risks. Elvis, however, dismissed the idea with a firm resolve, insisting that Priscilla was just coming to and that there was no need for alarm. He seemed unflappable, reassuring those around him that she was going to be fine. He rationalized that she simply needed time to let the effects of the pills wear off, and in his mind, calling a doctor would only make things worse. Priscilla later recounted in her memoir how she could hear his voice, distant yet insistent, refusing to acknowledge the gravity of her condition. It was as if Elvis believed that sheer willpower alone could bring her back to full consciousness. Why didn't Elvis call a doctor? Was it out of sheer confidence in his own judgment? Or was there something more behind his reluctance? It's possible that Elvis genuinely believed he knew what was best for Priscilla, that he had control over the situation and could manage her condition without outside help. He may have thought that the pills he gave her were harmless enough and that her reaction was simply stronger than anticipated. But there could have been a deeper fear at play, the fear of scandal. Elvis Presley was not just a man. He was an icon, a public figure whose every move was scrutinized by the press and fans alike. The idea of a young woman under his care slipping into unconsciousness for days potentially needing emergency medical attention, could have led to a storm of negative publicity. 
Perhaps he thought that keeping the incident quiet, handling it behind closed doors, was the best way to protect both Priscilla and himself from the prying eyes of the world. In Elvis's mind, maintaining control was paramount, and calling a doctor might have meant admitting that he had lost it, even if just for a moment. Number 4. Priscilla's Perspective When she woke up After nearly two days of drifting in and out of consciousness, Priscilla finally awoke. Her eyes slowly opened, and she found herself lying on a chaise lounge in Elvis's office, the disorienting haze beginning to lift. She felt weak and still somewhat confused, the memories of the past hours fragmented like a broken mirror, but she was aware enough to see Elvis sitting nearby. He watched her with a concerned look, and as she gathered herself, she could see the mixture of worry and a touch of guilt in his eyes. To Elvis's surprise, Priscilla wasn't upset. Instead, she managed a smile, her eyes meeting his. She even gave him a playful wink, as if to assure him that everything was all right, that she bore no resentment for what had happened. It was almost as if she was trying to reassure him more than herself, that this incident was nothing more than a bump in the road of their extraordinary love story. Priscilla later claimed that she didn't mind the fact that Elvis hadn't called for a doctor during those chaotic two days. It was an astonishing statement, especially given the seriousness of what she had gone through. But Priscilla's reaction makes more sense when you consider the deep love and admiration she had for Elvis. She was young, just 17 at the time, and completely swept away by the glamorous world that Elvis had brought her into. She idolized him, and in her eyes, he could do no wrong. Elvis was larger than life, a man she trusted implicitly, and she saw his actions through the lens of that unwavering devotion. Whether it was a result of not fully grasping the gravity of the situation or simply being too enamored to see the red flags, Priscilla was willing to overlook what others might have considered dangerous negligence. She saw Elvis as her protector, and the idea that he could have made a poor judgment call simply didn't fit into her romanticized image of their relationship. In an attempt to make up for what had happened, Elvis did what he knew best. He turned to grand gestures. On Christmas Eve, he surprised Priscilla with a brand new puppy, a small, innocent creature meant to symbolize joy and new beginnings. The gesture was typical of Elvis, who often sought to balance his faults with elaborate gifts, as if material offerings could heal any emotional wounds. The puppy was a token of his affection, a way to distract from the fear and confusion she had experienced just days earlier. And it worked. To Priscilla, the puppy was a reminder of Elvis's love and a reassurance that everything was all right again. It added a complex layer to their relationship, one where mistakes could be glossed over with charm and lavish presence, where the emotional roller coaster was somehow always justified by the depth of their love. It was this blend of recklessness, romance, and grandeur that made their relationship both intoxicating and perilous. Number three. A Deeper Look, Elvis and Priscilla's Relationship Dynamics The relationship between Elvis and Priscilla was marked by an undeniable power imbalance that shaped every aspect of their lives together. Elvis was not only older and more experienced, but he was also a global superstar whose presence and influence were overpowering. From the very beginning, he held the reins of their relationship and his control over Priscilla extended beyond the superficial. He dictated where she went, who she saw, and how she presented herself to the world. The incident with the pills was just one example of how Elvis exerted his dominance. He believed he knew what was best for Priscilla, even if it meant taking decisions out of her hands. It wasn't just about caring for her. It was about controlling her every move, molding her into the partner he envisioned. Priscilla was expected to fit seamlessly into the life he had constructed, her individuality often pushed aside in favor of Elvis's desires and expectations. For Priscilla, this power dynamic was both exhilarating and deeply troubling. On one hand, she was in love with Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, 
a man whose charm and charisma captivated not just her, but millions around the world. Being by his side was like living a fantasy, a whirlwind of luxury, fame, and romance. But beneath the glamour, Priscilla struggled with the realities of being in a relationship where she had little control over her own life. She had to adhere to Elvis's rules, whether it was about her appearance, her behavior, or even the people she could associate with. The love she felt for Elvis was genuine, but it came at a cost. She had to navigate the challenges of loving someone who demanded complete submission, and it left her feeling isolated, longing for a sense of agency that she rarely experienced. Her internal conflict was a constant battle, balancing the allure of being loved by Elvis with the sacrifices she had to make to stay in his world. Priscilla's memoir, Elvis and Me, offers a candid look into how she navigated these complexities and why she chose to stay with Elvis despite the challenges. She wrote about moments where she justified his controlling behavior, framing it as an expression of his deep love and protectiveness. In her eyes, Elvis wasn't trying to dominate her. He was simply caring for her in the only way he knew how. Priscilla often convinced herself that Elvis's actions were for her benefit, even when they left her feeling trapped. She recounts how he dictated her fashion choices, telling her what to wear and how to style her hair, and how she willingly complied, seeing it as a way to please him. Priscilla was deeply in love, and her devotion to Elvis made her overlook behaviors that others might have found stifling or even abusive. She believed that by conforming to his expectations, she was solidifying their bond, making herself indispensable in his life. Her memoir sheds light on the sacrifices she made to maintain their relationship, highlighting the emotional complexity of loving someone as magnetic yet controlling as Elvis Presley. Number 2. The Public Verses Private Elvis Elvis Presley was a master of contradictions, a man whose public persona often stood in stark contrast to his private behavior. To the world, Elvis was the king of rock and roll, a larger-than-life figure exuding charm, generosity, and an unmistakable sense of care for his fans and those around him. He gave electrifying performances, captivated audiences with his magnetic stage presence, and often went out of his way to show appreciation for those who adored him. He was the epitome of charisma, embodying a level of warmth that made his fans feel connected to him on a deeply personal level. But behind closed doors, Elvis was a different person. He could be impulsive, careless, and even reckless with the people closest to him. The incident with Priscilla was a clear example of this contradiction. While he cared for her, his decision not to call a doctor when she was unconscious for two days revealed a disturbing side of his character, one that was willing to take dangerous risks with the well-being of those he loved most. This disparity between the public Elvis and the private Elvis painted a picture of a man who was deeply complex, sometimes tender and attentive, yet also capable of shocking neglect. Elvis's struggle to balance his immense fame with his personal relationships added another layer to his complexities. As one of the most famous people in the world, he was constantly under pressure to perform, to be the legend that people expected him to be. The demands of fame weighed heavily on him, and maintaining that image often took precedence over everything else. This need to keep up appearances affected his relationships, including his relationship with Priscilla, in moments where he should have prioritized her health and safety, like when she was unconscious for two days, he instead acted in a way that seemed designed to keep things under wraps, perhaps fearful of the public knowing that he had lost control of a situation. The pressures of being Elvis Presley meant that his personal life was always at risk of being overshadowed by his public persona. This incident with Priscilla was just one instance of the many struggles that took place behind the scenes, struggles that highlighted the price of fame, where the expectation to always be the king came at the cost of genuine, healthy connections with those who loved him. Number 1. 
Reflections on Elvis' Actions Elvis's decision not to call a doctor when Priscilla was unconscious for two days raises significant questions about his motivations and understanding of responsibility. Was his refusal to seek medical help an act of negligence, or did it stem from a misguided trust in his own judgment that everything would be all right? Elvis was known for his commanding presence and an unwavering belief in his ability to control any situation, and this incident might have simply been another instance of that overconfidence. He may have truly believed that Priscilla would be fine without outside help, relying on his instincts rather than recognizing the severity of the situation. On the other hand, it could also point to a more troubling side of his character, a side that was willing to dismiss genuine concerns and take unnecessary risks with the well-being of someone he loved. Elvis's actions demonstrated a lack of awareness about the gravity of the situation, and perhaps an inability to understand that real care sometimes requires acknowledging one's limitations and seeking help beyond oneself. It revealed a flaw in his perception of what it meant to be responsible, blurring the line between confidence and carelessness. This story offers important lessons about relationships, particularly the balance between care, trust, and the danger of assuming control without understanding the risks. Elvis's actions serve as a reminder that love isn't just about grand gestures or maintaining control. It's about understanding when to step back and seek help, especially when the well-being of a loved one is at stake. True care involves recognizing when a situation is beyond one's capacity and acting in the best interest of the other person, even if that means admitting vulnerability. Priscilla's experience highlights how misguided trust and a desire for control can lead to potentially dangerous outcomes, showing that genuine love requires not only emotional connection, but also the humility to admit when you're out of your depth. It's a powerful reminder of the importance of balancing trust with responsibility, and of understanding that sometimes the most caring thing you can do is to let go of control and ask for help. In this story, we explored a pivotal and unsettling moment in the relationship between Elvis Presley and Priscilla, an incident that spoke volumes about the complex dynamics between them. Priscilla, exhausted and overwhelmed, passed out after taking pills given by Elvis, leading to a disorienting two days where she drifted in and out of consciousness. During this time, despite the concern of those around them, Elvis refused to call a doctor, confident that she would be fine. His decision revealed a side of Elvis that was both self-assured and dangerously reckless when it came to those he loved. And yet, when Priscilla awoke, she responded with a smile and a playful wink, not showing any anger or frustration at the situation. This reaction highlighted her deep devotion to Elvis, even when his actions put her well-being at risk. Elvis Presley was indeed a man of many contradictions, and this incident offers a glimpse into the complicated, often troubling dynamics that characterized his most intimate relationships. If you enjoyed this exploration of Elvis and Priscilla's story, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you believe Elvis truly cared for Priscilla, or was his judgment clouded by his need for control? Let us know in the comments below.